Good evening, good night, everybody. Daniel Spatz, special edition, Daniel Spatz interviews. We are here always in California. It's 8.37 p.m. We have a special guest tonight from Australia, live. Um, we have a great coach, Frederick Fontaine, uh, who really uh, very, very nice, uh, immediately accepted our invitation to talk. So it's a pleasure, it's a pleasure uh, receiving um, Frederick, you say, what is Daniel doing right now? Oh, Frederick, Frederick, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you the welcome. Right now, one of the best coaches in the world. We bring the best people in the world. Let me find Frederick. The invitation, the invitation has been sent. Hola a todos, hi everybody. Oh, Frederick. How are Hello. you, Fred? Congratulations. Oh, yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> there you go. Yes. Yeah. Good win. Yesterday. Hey man, see, I told you, I'm gonna bring you luck. <laughs> yeah, it was a great moment. Okay, T thank you so much for being so kind, so nice, and accepting the invitation to talk. Perfect, my pleasure, Daniel. Thank you, thank you so much. I want to say thanks to Paul Dorochenko who made it possible. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <clears throat> Paul. Paul is a uh, is one of my old friends. From France, he was uh, actually he was like um, doing my fitness program when I was playing, so I know him for a long time. Fantastic! Fant so you were student of Paul. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Long he was time. tough, tough, tough guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, <clears throat> yeah, he was like, um, yeah, he was using a new method in the nineties. You know, he was uh, on the tour with some uh, player like Guy Forget, you know, myself, Nicolas Escudé in the 90s and uh, I met him like that. He was physio and fitness uh, trainer. Fantastic. What, uh, so uh, what do you guys, how was the celebration after the, the win? No, it was like, uh, yeah, of course, we celebrated a little bit with the team uh, on site, you know, and after, but it was late, you know, so, uh, and, and some player has to, uh, to fly today. So no, it was calm at the hotel. Uh, yeah, it was, uh, okay. we, we still have like, like uh, is the next next tournament is going to be in a, in a few days in the Australian Open, so we have to keep the energy. <laughs> yeah, I'm talking to Frederic Fontaine. Uh, you you were born in Morocco, right? Yeah, in, in Casablanca. In, okay. yeah, in Casablanca. But you you they tell you from France, right? That when they yeah, in, yeah. my parents okay. were were working there, so so um, that's why I was born. And then after uh, five years old, I came back to where I live in the southwest of France, in Pau, near Biarritz, a beautiful region. Fantastic. So you coach, you you are yourself a fantastic player, fifth in the world. I can see in the uh, uh, ninety-one. What a time of great players when you were fifth in the world, Frederic, right? Yeah, yeah, it was a lot of uh, good. Uh, yeah, it was. The, I am the same age of uh, Andre Agassi. You know, Jim Courier, Pete Sampras was uh, one year uh, younger. And yeah, player like uh, I was playing at the same time like Edberg, you know. Uh, Muster, Bruguera, you know, that was the, the, the guy who was like performing at this time. It's true that the speed of the ball changed dramatically from the time that you played to now, nowadays? Yeah, of course, when you, you see some video <laughs> that, like, it's, uh, in the slow motion, yeah, <laughs> most of that is like uh, now the rackets are, are really light. You know more light, and uh, but you you can move the yeah the head of the racket really fast. You know all the techniques are a lot with the wrist now, and uh, yeah, and and of course the the the, the physical part uh, uh, very important uh, on on this improvement of the speed. Yeah, you you besides your uh, uh, playing experience, uh, you coach uh, Caroline Garcia, right? Uh, uh, Jeremy Chardy, uh, Pospil. But tell me you now, uh, uh, of course, Felix, which is here in the USA, they love Felix Aliasin. Uh, uh, I mean, he's, he's one of the favorites in the crowd. Um, he's very charismatic. Uh, but, but tell us about your involvement with the uh, Canadian tennis, Frederic, for people who don't know. Yeah, I mean, um, when I stopped uh, work with uh, Jeremy Chardy and then Karen, Karen Garcia, the technical director of uh, Tennis Canada, who, who was like French, Louis Borfiga, uh, was, was uh, the technical director and then called me and if I wanted to, to make a test with uh, Vacek Pospisil, who was a young player out of the top 100 at this time, 21 years old. 
And he told me, okay, um, we think that he has a good potential, you know, to go in the top 50, top 30. So uh, <clears throat> can you make a try, you know? And we did that, you know, end of uh, 2012. And um, our, yeah, we matched right away with Vacek because he's a hard worker, you know, uh, and uh, yeah, good value with his family. And uh, and then, yeah, he, he, in 2013, he made a great season. He went to top 25 in singles, you know, uh, winning number four in doubles, winning Wimbledon uh, with uh, Jack Sock, you know, uh, making semi-final in Master of Thousand in singles, quarter-final in Wimbledon. So we, we, we made a good run together. Uh, let me ask you, how much benefit a, play, a, a former professional player like you have when you, when you start coaching versus the guys who didn't play the tour, but still, you know, they, they try to coach? I mean, uh, I, I will say, and I am happy that I did this process because when I stopped my career, I decided decide to, to don't go straight to coach a player on the tour because, of course, it was my, my skills, my experience. But I prefer to, yeah, to, co back, to come back to school and to, to learn about the, 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 the fitness, the psychology, and to do, uh, also to learn how to teach tennis because yeah, I think when you are a good player, it's not, uh, you are not um, automatically a good uh, coach because uh, there's like some skills that you still need to, uh, to, to, to learn. So I did that during 10 years because I, I had my own academy in the Southwest of France with my coach, you know, and I, I start to learn you know, how to teach, how to change a grip, you know, how to change the technique, uh, the fundamentals. And like this, I think it's a plus with the, the, the player experience. And uh, that's why... Um, it helped me a lot in my career, of course, of course, my experience as a player, but also, also I took the time to, yeah, to, to learn how to, to be able to communicate with your player, to build a plan, to, to, to help your player to develop himself. This is very important. Have you translated something from your game to your players, something you have done very well as a player to your players? Uh, I mean, uh, <clears throat> I think I have a good skill in my character. I'm very calm. And uh, this is something that the player needs because uh, we are always in competition, up and down, win winning, losing, you know, <laughs> every week. So uh, I'm, uh, the basic, I think, the, the fundamental for a coach is like to be, yeah, to be, to be stable, to be stable emotionally. So that this is something natural in me. But um, but then I will say, like in terms of uh, of game, <laughs> of the tactical approach, I will say that. I, uh, I was uh, I was able to to transmit something that I didn't have as a as a player because <laughs> it's always like that you know you are like uh, you are like interested to to say okay I was missing that as a player so I'm going to study to know to to push and to understand why and then you transmit to your player that is, this is a uh, important step uh, this is the serve and... mostly all, all the players because I, I didn't have like good good serve but all the players that I work with were, uh, were like good, good uh, big, big good, server, good, like Chardy, good Chardy, servers. Ka Chardy, Pospisil, and Felix. <laughs> Very good service. Uh, uh, Frederick, I'm always wondering, I interviewed so many great coaches, uh, uh, tennis uh, uh, teachers, instructors. Uh, I'm wondering, if the, the, the new channel, you know, everybody talks about the benefits of starting the kids with the colorful balls, right? Uh, with the, sorry, with the? Starting the kids with the colorful balls, the soft balls, you know? Okay. The, yeah. the, um, um, it, it, I'm wondering if one of these guys of the next gen learned to play with a red, green, or no, when they were young. Felix, uh, Shapovalov, uh, or they learn with a regular ball. Uh, I think Felix, uh, it's a good question. I think Felix did because uh, he's young, you know, and I think almost of the program in the, you know, in the Canada, I think they are like the, the mini tennis, you know, like coming from, I think it's coming from Belgium and France, you know, a lot. But I think they, they, they were like using that uh, for Jeremy a little bit because I, I started to work with him when he was 12. So I, I, I knew his, uh, his coach before. And I knew they were like, uh, most of the club in France that are using those softball, but not like, uh, not like so much uh, in so much period of time, you know, it's uh, really when you, you, when you start, you know, after eight and nine, you start to play with normal balls. Perfect. Perfect. Um, tell us about um, Canadian tennis. 
well, because they have, you know, Andrescu, uh, Dennis, uh, I mean, uh, Felix. What is going on up here above me? Because they are above uh, California. <laughs> yeah, Raonic. <laughs> Raonic, exactly. Right? Bouchard. Oh, yeah. And Pospisil, Lela Fernandez now. And yeah, I think there's like, uh, there's different factors. I, I will say like, uh, uh, Luigi Borfiga, 10 years ago, came to Canada and I think he, 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 he structured well, you know, um, the, the development, you know, the, of the players, you know, that means like to put like, uh, to integrate some national center, to, to contact some uh, uh, coach with uh, good knowledge, you know, so he was able to do that. And like this, it was a good basis for, for, for all the players and it, it, was, uh, it was important to have this fundamental structure. And I think he was smart in the way of like, because I, I have the experience uh, for, uh, from the French Federation, for example, because I'm French. Uh, French Federation, Federation, they have like the knowledge, you know, they have like the money, the structure. But I will say for Canada, they were able to stay like a, a small board, you know, small board. So uh, the ability to put, uh, to put uh, uh, the, the good people around one or two players and at the same time to have like a national center. So that like this, when you have the both things, then you can, uh, you can have like a good uh, stimulation between the, the private, you know, between the, the federation and you are not killing, uh, you know, because when the federation is too strong, for example, in France, uh, at one moment, it was too strong and it was like uh, cutting the possibility for private coach to do their, their project with, uh, with a player. Mm -hmm. So now, and so for Tennis Canada, they were able to, okay, we, we, we help financially, like, for example, Shapovalov, you know, or Vacek, you know, that they were, like, not coming from the, the structure, the, 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 the tennis kind of structure. They were able also to help them to bring some, uh, to, to advise, to take some good coach. And like this, uh, they, yeah, it's, it's good to have, like, the, the, the two systems. Very clear. We are live from Australia. So it's a, it's a luxury having you here, Frederic. The, the coach of Felix Aliasin. Um, you started with Felix in 2017, right? Exactly, yeah. Is still, uh, from my knowledge, I don't know, uh, uh, Mr. Nadal, uh, Tony Nadal involved on the team or not? Yeah, exactly. He's a consultant with us, you know, so he was like with us in uh, Monte Carlo, Madrid, French Open and US Open. And this year he will come also for the clay and uh, several tournaments and especially not in the Australian Open because... Uh, yeah, it's it's maybe it's difficult you know, to uh, to travel a lot, but uh, yeah, Tony is uh, is still in the, in the team. Without going through details, because I know it's a professional work, and I don't want to go through any private things, please. Uh, but tell us something you want to share about the involvement of Tony in terms of what is what you see from outside, what impact is uh, yeah. causing on Felix. Uh, I mean, uh, <clears throat> we decide. Uh, at the, the end of last year, I mean, uh, not in 2000, uh, at the end of 2020, to, to add in our team somebody who already made the, 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 the big mountains, you know, like to, uh, somebody who had the experience of the, the top level, you know, winning Grand Chelem. So we have a, a list with Felix. And, uh, and of course, we, we connect together with, uh, with the choice of Tony Nadal because Tony Nadal, uh, and now knowing knowing him more for after one year of collaboration, is is like a, a great a great um, person, you know, like in terms of value, uh, and and we, it's very like very positive now, value like uh, strong value, strong family value, strong uh, high level value, but in in a, in the way of to stay to staying simple, you know, like not complicated. That's uh, very important, and so now knowing uh, Tony now. It's, uh, it's very positive for, for me, of, for Felix, of course, because it stimulates him, you know, give him confidence. And, and, but also for me, because it's always good. Uh, I'm 51 years old and uh, you, 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 you need to uh, still uh, learn things, you know, you, you still need to develop your skills, you know, you, you, it's important to have like external eyes. And Tony is, uh, is, has his, his, his role, you know, and, and uh, and we are really happy with the job that we are doing with him. But I will say, of course, uh, now after one year, you can understand uh, why Rafa won those 21 titles, Grand Chelem titles. Of course, because he's uh, talented, uh, he's, he has a lot of quality, but you can understand also 
more what was like uh, inside, you know, inside the team, you know, and, and Tony Nadal is, uh, is, uh, is a big part of that also. They also practice together sometimes, Frederick? Yeah, yeah, but uh, we, we did uh, a preparation in 2020 of season. Mm -hmm. We went to, uh, to Mallorca. This year was a little bit more difficult because, uh, because the time war was uh, really short, you know, between the, the tournaments. So Tony joined us uh, for a few days in, in uh, Monaco. And because of because of uh, uh, Rafa was not playing last year, we didn't practice so much with him. But as when we can, of course, we we practice uh, with Rafa. How you manage, Frederic, the relationship uh, since you have to be twenty four hours with the players, right? Traveling and and how do you avoid burnout? The relationship to be damaged. You know what I mean? No, no. Thinking, I don't want to see this guy anymore. You know, feeling like that. <laughs> yeah, of course we are. Uh, we are spending a lot of time uh, with Felix, but I'm not alone. There is a team, you know, around. There's uh, Andres Vial, is from Chile, uh, a physio that you, he was working also for with me with Bacek Pospisil. So we have a good relation. There is Nicolas Perrot, a fitness coach, uh, um, living in Canada now, but but he's for, from France. There is like uh, also the family of uh, of Felix, you know, the father, the mother. And Malika, the sister, who is like uh, a lot with, with us, also the, the, the girlfriend of, of Felix. No? So there is like a lot of people around. And like this, we, we can, uh, let's say, we can uh, um, recharge the batteries, you know. Okay, of course, I go on the court, we, we go on the fitness with Felix. But after, he, he can relax and he can relax with uh, his family, you know. We can have like dinner together. We, we are aware of like uh, of uh, this, um, yeah, to, 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 to don't like go... 24 hours on tennis and I will say like uh, which is very important and this is a, a good quality of Felix um, he's young he's 21 years old but uh, we are able to to speak about different subjects you know we go in the politics economic philosophy and uh, because it's uh, so that's uh, that's good for 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 the team you know and for people uh, um, somebody like me you know uh, it's interesting because we can uh, yeah, we can uh, talk about different things and not just always about tennis. So that's answer to your question. So we are able to, yeah, to recharge our relation. Fantastic. Tactics. I'm crazy, Frederic, as a coach. Um, I heard that the former players said uh, before was more tactical. You, you played in the 90s compared with nowadays. Is that true or still... Uh, you develop a lot of tactics for the matches. Yeah, I will say, of course, because the, the game was slower at the, yeah, before. So then you, you have more time to build the points, you know, let's say to a uh, little bit to think about more, you know, between the, <laughs> the points. But uh, uh, I will say now, because we are, we are uh, working with uh, statistics, you know, uh, we are... Uh, uh, yeah, we are developing a strategy, of course. Eh? It's not just about uh, instinct. Uh, but uh, I will say, the, compared to um, the 90s, you know, um, the importance of the first shot is like very, yeah, is, is, uh, is, uh, um, is very uh, big impact. You know, the first two shots are, are like uh, very important, but it's the beginning of the strategy. It's still a strategy where you are going to serve, you know, well, what you are going to do after the, those two or three shots, you know, that it's a, uh, there's a lot, still a lot of strategy. I saw the match with Medvedev and, and, and really, um, the, he, what I saw you, uh, I love to analyze, they went back and to back and cross court and Felix was winning at the beginning and, and imposing, but then looks like, uh, uh, Daniel, it had something, right? That uh, the same than the U.S. Open. What? What that Russian has difficult? Uh, yeah, the, the 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 copy for the moment. The copy is difficult for Felix. The the the, the plan is a little bit difficult because, of course, the strength of Danny Melvedev are like uh, yeah are pushing Felix to to go to the mistake. You know, because he's uh, you know that is is of course he's, he's able to. To don't miss, you know, to cover the court unbelievable, uh, Danny Melvedev. He's not giving giving you one free point, you know, but at the same time, he, he's playing like with pressure, you know, he's, he's not mm. like slow, you know. He's covering the, the court unbelievable. He make, it it makes you play the, the extra volley, extra shots. 
but he's also serving well. That's why the <laughs> he's number two, of course, and the last uh, Grand Slam winner. So that means for Felix, he's like being able to yeah to 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 serve well, to 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 be strong in the first two shots, but at the same times to don't rush, uh, but start to be complicated, you know. But like you saw, you know, uh, he was playing well. They were like at four four, then then some few mistakes, and then I will say that it was was more like. Uh, more like uh, yeah, a little bit of confusion in the tactic with Felix, you know, rushing to to the when he has like short ball, rushing a little bit too much or, or not going enough, you know, with hesitation. So this this kind of just few uh, confusion in the spirit, then then the, the score went went really fast, you know, and also of course also because of the quality of Medvedev, we with his is a player like with a lot of confidence for the moment. And also, uh, this day was like really humid, so the balls were like a little bit slower, and physically was a little bit uh, tougher. So that's that's uh, for the moment that uh, like it's um, we are we are still learning, and and we will find uh, something to 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 beat Medvedev. Oh, you will, you will. <laughs> uh, a couple more questions, and I let you go. I know I'm very grateful for your time. Mm, you have five more minutes. Yeah, yeah, I have time. Yeah, yeah, but still 10 minutes, yeah. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Uh, is Felix a perfectionist practicing or not? Yeah. yeah, he's really a perfectionist, yeah. So with all the positive of being per perfectionist, that means that he wants always like to, yeah, to do the, the best that he can on the, on the practice. And this is, this is very important. And uh, Felix is a really hard worker, you know, it's coming from his education with his dad because he started the tennis with his dad. And uh, the, so the parents have good value, you know, value of like, uh, yeah, doing the things, re good, a uh, lot of repetition, you know, focus, discipline, that's is something that he has deep inside coming from uh, his parents and from his character. And um, so we around that, of course, it's also important that uh, when you are perfectionist, sometimes you are looking uh, maybe too much perfection and it has to be a direction. So this is the, the role of the coach of the team to, to, to balance that and not just like uh, being like too, um, too perfectionist. You know, you have, you have to, to be disciplined, repeat, but at the same time, you, you need to have like a detachment because you, you cannot be perfect every day. I heard coaches and former champions that I talked to interviewed that you have to learn to win playing bad and the bad days. Winning, winning ugly. <laughs> winning ugly. So how is uh, Felix in that department? He knows yeah. how to win in ugly? No, he still, he still needs to develop this, this part of, uh, of this game, of his personality. That means he needs to have like more tools in his game, like to have like a, yeah, when, uh, for example, for against Medvedev, when it, where something is not going in his way, to, to be able to adjust things, you know, tactically, technically. But when you want to adjust things tactically, that that means that you need also to have the tools, you know, the technical tool, the, you need to have the shot, the skills. So, and and also you need to have like uh, these mental skills to to be more patient, you know, to don't go uh, to, to win, like you said, you know, to win ugly. That means winning early, that means, okay, you don't have to go like for winner every shot, you know, you have to, to play with the angle, to change of rhythm, you know, to, to disturb your opponent on the serve, you know, this is all, all this area that of course, Felix is a young player, his main strength like Chapovalov, those young players, is like the, the, the firepower, you know. Mm -hmm. Of course, when they, they will be able to, to have the, this uh, winning ugly skills, they, they will be better player for sure. Uh, mental, uh, physical and, and and technical skills. What would you win your percentages to reach the top? If you have to say, Daniel, this is the they need the mental, the technical, and 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 of course the ta tactics, including the technical. I mean, all, and the physical. What would you say percentages for for Frederic Fontaine? Yeah. So for me, the, the, because. The, to be a, a, um, a top tennis player, you, it's a puzzle. You know, it's just one, it's just one pillar. It's not just about technique. It's it's a it's a puzzle. And I will say uh, to 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 answer this question, if I, because I think it's interesting for all the coaches or the parents mm. or the players, it, it depends. Uh, it depends on the um, the age. 
I would say, you know, when you are young, for me, because I did the development of Jeremy Chardy when he was 12, you know, and I will say that the, the, the technical part is really important when you are young because uh, then after will come uh, like the tactical ID, to build a, a tactical ID um, aligned with your technical strength, your mental strength and, and your, your, your physical, you know, because if you are like uh, very thin, and not, not too much power, then you have to develop a, a certain strategy uh, in your game, you know. And then, of course, when you go to the high level, if the, those parts uh, was uh, really well made, you know, the technical part, the, the physical development, then you are, just can focus on the mental skills. And uh, because the, at the top level, uh, you, you, you don't have time to, too much to work technically. You, you don't have time to develop a lot of the you know, technical aspects. You have to develop... Uh, to be able to to be fresh from the competitions, to be like uh, that, your mind is the mindset is really there, you know, to refill the refill the battery, to, to to don't be injured. That means a lot of injury prevention, you know. So all the physical, the, the fundamental physical physic, physical part and technical part have to be done before 18. That's very important because if you have like some kind of technical holes, uh, but then under pressure on the top level, you you will break down, you know. That's uh, that's uh, and also physical physical part. You know, if you have like, a, uh, let's say, like a, not a good mobility in the hips or in the back or in the shoulder, uh, starting to the high level, then the, it's going to crack under pressure because the more you go in the top level, and the pressure is is higher. So if you have like a weakness, it's going to it's going to break down. So that's why if the weakness is too too important. It's going to be tough to you know to to fix that because you in a level you never you don't have like so much time to work on and to develop your all those skills. Two more questions. Uh, what time is there now, Frederic? For you, what time it is? It's, uh, quarter four zero five p.m. Oh, here is nine in California. Nine p.m. Ah. So, but the day the day, day before. Yeah. So, you talk about strength and weaknesses. Are you agree with coaches who says said and says you the the, the player should work 70 80% in the strength and 20 30, 30% in weaknesses yeah i'm i'm uh, i'm i'm convinced and that what's what i did in the, the, the player development with felix or with Carlin garcia or with uh, pospisil or chardy and especially with chardy because he was 12 i i think uh, you you cannot go further Uh, if you start from the weakness, you know, especially with a young player, you you have to in identify the the the, the strength, and it, which is something that uh, it's not so complicated because you, if you if you uh, if you look in, in deeply into 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 that, and uh, and this is important too because the 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 strength you are going to develop also the confidence because uh, mm -hmm. if you go just with the weakness, you know, when the the, the player are young, it's not uh, for me, it's not the the right approach, and of course. It's it's a bad percentage at which period. Let's say if you are like uh, uh, when they are young, uh, when you have time to develop something, when you are, when you are not in competition, then you have to 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 put your attention more on the weakness, you know, to to yeah to to work on the technical part, uh, technical weakness, or like a, um, a weakness in the in the, the physical part. You have to work on that, you know. But it's it's um, more likely in our uh, in. Uh, I mean, overall, it's important to spend more time with the uh, with the the, the 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 strength because it's important to develop the strength. Yeah. Is Felix uh, when you are preparing a match, Frederick, uh, you um, focus more on the imposing the game from Felix or adjusting to the opponent's game? What what is is the the take? Uh, it's a big percentage to impose his game, you know. Like this, it's very important that uh, yeah, you have to start with uh, with your strength, you know, to impose your game. But for every match, we have like a kind of adjustments with the opponent, of course. But but like uh, uh, but if you if you adjust too much to the opponent, that means you know it's not uh, it's not good, you know. You have if you want to be like number one, you know, winner, you have to impose your game, and then. Depending on how you are feeling, how is going to be the, the the competition with your opponent? Of course, because tennis is is about adjustment. Every shot, every game, you know, every day, more win, sun. How you are going to feel? 
of course. But but the 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 first pillar is like okay, I'm going to impose your game, but oh oh, I'm going to adjust a little bit to to my opponent. A lot of people think that the players like Felix and the top players in the world they do magic things in practice. They they practice something uh, coming from. The another galaxy is uh, is that true? Or they just play, practice no, no. like everybody. It's not true. It's not uh, at one point the tennis. Uh, the tennis can be simple, you know. The all the the top players, you know, they are like practicing, you know, the drills, you know, the shots. You know, so tennis is about like serve, forehand, backhand, volley, you know, and there is a line for everyone. The the, the court is is the same. So I will say that the the magical uh, alchemy. <laughs> it's always, <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's in the balance. It's what you are going to do, how much, and at which moment. That's the, that's the magical po uh, portion. But, uh, but it's different for everyone. Fantastic. And, and last, uh, I, last two questions, for sure. Um, rankings. Are you uh, obsessed, and Felix, with the ranking? Uh, every month, every year, he's looking at. Oh, I want to be top five in May. I want to be. Uh, is 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 that? I don't know really. No, it's very important, especially as as coach. Of course, the, the players they are in the race. The pay, players they want to win. If they are not happy, if they are not winning, if they are not going into the ranking, this is normal. It's the competition. But it's very important for the coaches, for the parents also, that to um, to really have in mind that uh, the the result is a consequence. You know, it's very important. It's a consequence of what you are going to do. Uh, and this is very important, especially when they are young, uh, that the confidence, uh, the process doesn't have to be too much attached on the result. Of course, um, the final point is like to win, to improve. But I will say a lot of mistakes that what I, I see in the process development of the player when they are young, that uh, they are like too much at attached to the results. You know, there's like uh, 60, 70 percent of the the, the 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 confidence need to be attached to on the process on the process what where i want to go how i'm going to go where am i'm going to go to uh, to achieve those results you know to plan and and uh, i will say the, the coach and the parent they they, they they really have to to be um, to feel that because like this they are going to to build something solid and uh, and because we know that the odyssey to the high level is very long and it's difficult so it's very important to be that the parents and the coach are the guardian of the process, you know, because the, the player, they want the result, but we have to rebalance that and to be the, in the process. And this is the last one. Eh? I, I, I promise you. Thank you. Thank you once again. You're very generous, very, also very kind, very nice. Thanks. I hope I see you in Indian in Wells. If you stop yeah. by, I live two hours. We hope we will be there. <laughs> okay, we can get together for a for a coffee or beer. You like beer or coffee? What do you like? Um, yeah, I'm I'm not drinking too much alcohol, but sometimes fresh beer. You know when it's me fresh. neither. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Frederick, uh, in terms of um, uh, uh, the 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 coaching, I know you guys coach signals and, but are you in favor of uh, on-court coaching for men's tennis in the future or not? So this is a uh, interesting. Uh, this is an actual question. I will say not just in, only in in, uh, in tennis, but in the in the in the world that we are living. Uh, for me, um, I will say there is like uh, when you are like uh, edu uh, a, a coach, you know, a parents, you 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 are in the education, you know, and uh, um, I think the tennis tennis is an individual sport, and this is uh, this is the, the the beauty of the tennis. And in individual sport means that you have to find your own solution. You you are on the court, you are fighting uh, in the right way, not with the, <laughs> the hands, but with your racket to with an opponent. So it's a duel. And I will say that the coach, uh, the coach for me, they are like there is too much intervention, and I I, I believe more. Uh, that everybody is giving his uh, advice. Everybody is easy to, from the outside, to always like uh, uh, want to say, oh, you, you should do that, you should do that. And for me, it's make your player more fragile. So that's, uh, that's really important. For me, less is better. Like this, I don't know, maybe you know the philosophy of the Via Negativa. We are in a world that we always want to put something more, to have more results, something more, to add more things. 
And my philosophy is more like uh, to, yeah, you have to be an example. When you are parents, coach, you know, you have to be an example. You have to, yeah, in your action, but you have to, to let the player uh, do their own path. You, you can go out, you, there's a frame, you know, but they, are, they have to find their own uh, power, you know, their own alchemy, their own solution. So that means you have to, to, um, to do intervention, but like few, few ones at the right moment, because uh, more important is the action. That's, that's my answer for that. Thank you so much, uh, Frederic. You were extremely nice. I'm going to upload the interview tomorrow for the YouTube channel. Perfect. I wish you a wonderful uh, Australian Open, and I'm going to be a big fan of, of the team, and I, I, I sincerely can't wait to see you in Indian Wells. And, okay. and Felix, to, <laughs> to get to know him, really. Perfect. Thank you so much. Oh, I wish you good luck, and, uh, and take care. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you very much.